유한진 이사님부터 각자 소개를 간단하게 좀 부탁드리겠습니다. 아, 안녕하세요. 저 시영증권의 유한진 이사입니다. 저는 한 20년 동안 부동산 마켓에 있었었고요. 시영, 어, 아까 약간 어, 에드 대표랑 같은 쿠시번 앤 웨이크필드에서 10년 동안 어, 커머셜 부동산에 대한 어, 파이낸스 어, 인베스터 인베스먼트 진행을 했었습니다. 지금은 신용증권에서 패밀리 오피스 팀에서 어, 고액 자산가 분들 대상으로 어, 부동산 관련 어, 상담 컨설턴트 역할을 하고 있습니다. 아, 쿠시번 동기세요? 네, 쿠시번 동. 동기라 동창이네. 어, 예. Uh, you, uh, uh, maybe uh, you can introduce yourself at the. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm Donald Parra. I'm uh, co founder with Ed of Red Swan. Uh, so I come more from a technology background. I run a technology incubator for University of California. Spent the last couple of decades working with startups and innovation. Um, Ed and I met uh, you know, about six years ago. I came from the technology and the blockchain side. He, of course, came from the real estate side. Um, and I think it was a perfect uh, combination because we were able to, we saw the opportunity from different sides. And I think together um, we had the right team to go forward. So uh, we've come a long way and we have a lot to look forward to. Hello again. I'm Edward n w a k a t i I'm the CEO and founder of Red Swan CRE.、Uh, my background comes from the serial entrepreneur. I've had You know, several startups、uh, in the automotive industry,、uh, dot com business, and then、uh, Red Swan.、Um, my real estate experience goes back 17 years. Like I said, 14 of those with Cushman and Wakefield,、uh, three of those were with、uh, Colliers International.、Um, really enjoy real estate, but my passion is in technology.、Uh, when I was started、uh, one startup company in, in、uh, 1999, it was a startup company in the automotive business. We were funded with about $100 million, and we were able to take that company、uh, and have an exit、uh, to ADP, which is a Fortune 500 company. Today's topic is whether the global economy is global to be able 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 to be 그래서 우리 신, 어, 신영증권의 어, 유한지 이사님께서 우선 한국 부동산 최근 사, 동향 어, 좀그 부분에 좀 말씀 좀 부탁드립니다. 네, 그이 제가 부동산 프로퍼티가 굉장히 좀 다양하죠. 어, 저희가 흔히 얘기하는 주거시장인 아파트가 있을 수 있고요. 그리고 어, 지금 레드소환 쪽에서 많이 하고 있는 어, 커머셜 부동산이 있을 수 있고 이게 두 가지 큰 축으로 좀 나뉘는데 시장이 별로 좋지는 않습니다. 이제 그 이유가 어, 부동산은 기본적으로 레버리지라고 하는 대출, 대스 쓰게 되는데 지금 대출 금리가 상당히 많이 올라 있는 상황이고 그리고 어, 코로나 이후로 실은 어, 대한민국의 가장 큰 리테일 시장이었던 명동 그리고 강남역 이런 것들이 아직까지는 어, 코로나 이후로 회복이 좀 되고는 있지만 어, 코로나를 겨, 거치면서 아직 상당 부분 좀 공실이 좀 많이 발생하고 있는 상황이죠. 어, 특히 커머셜 부동산이 때 대표적으로 보게 되면 리테일 부동산이 있고 오피스 부동산이 있는데 오피스 부동산은 약간 좀 다른 것 같아요. 어, 지금 아마 웨나튼이나 여러 그 외국들은 코로나 이후에 코로나 때 어, 재택근무를 하고 백투도 오피스가 안 됐는데 한국은 지금 제가 한 20년 동안 부동산 마켓에 있으면서 오피스 시장의 공실률이 역대 최저인 것 같아요. 거의 공실이 제로인 수준입니다. 그래서 오피스 시장은 지금 여전히 굉장히 어, 공실률이 없음에도 불구하고 트랜잭션이 많이 일어나는 시장은 아닙니다. 이제 그 이유가 아까도 말씀드렸지만 어, 대출 금리 때문에 어, 기존의 투자자들이 예를 들면 어, 캠레잇을 3.5회 어, 투자를 했고 레버리지를 감안해서 어, 배당을 한 6% 정도 배당이라고 하게 되면 지금 캠레잇이 한 4.1, 뭐 4.2%까지 올라와 있어요. 이 이유, 이 캠레잇이 올라간다는 이유는 수익률이 높아진다는 이유는 어, 임대료가 고정이 되어 있었을 때 자산 가치가 떨어졌다는 의미인 거죠. 여기에 금리까지 올라가 있으니 상당 부분 대형 오피스 시장은 공실률이 없음에도 불구하고 트랜잭션이 잘 일어나지 않는 이런 시장이라고 좀 얘기할 수 있습니다. 그 요즘에 그 부동산 개발 디벨로퍼들이 계약한 그 토지들이 그 자금 조달을 안 못해서 어떻게 뭐 디폴트 되는 그런 상황이 많이 신문에서 봤는데 그거 무슨 상황이죠? 
지금 뭐 상당 부분 어 이것도 저는 뭐 금리랑 다 영향이 좀 있다라고 좀 판단이 되는데 실은 작년 10월 달에 뭐뭐 뭐 작년 9월 10월 달에 뭐 여러 가지 좀 이슈가 좀 있어서 있으면서 어 갑자기 금융권에서 이제 자금 경색이 좀 일어났죠. 그러다 보니까 실제로 어 개발 사업을 진행을 하는데 저희가 개발 사업을 한국 시장은 개발 사업을 진행을 할때 어, 시행사들이 토지를 매입하고 그리고 어, 저축은행들이나 캐피탈에서 브릿지론을 발행을 하고 이 브릿지론이 끝나는 시점에 어, 이 금융권에서 본 프로젝트 파이낸싱이 일어났는데 이 프로젝트 파이낸싱이 지금 약간 좀 멈춰져 있는 상황이죠. 여기에 금리가 프로젝트 파이낸싱의 금리가 좀 높다 보니까 실제로 시장에서 어, 개발 사업에 대한 부분에 대해서는 지금 약간 몸을 다들 움츠리고 있는 상황이긴 합니다. 지금 한국 상황은 어 일단은 어 임대율이 좋지 않고 수익률이 좋지 않는데 뭐 수치적으로 올라갔다 하더라도 어 그렇게 좋은 상황은 아니다. 그리고 지금 부동산 PF 시장이 얼어붙으면서 어 여러 가지 악조건의 상황이다고 그 정도죠. 네. 어 그러면은 우리 레드스완 씨 우리 이제 에드워드한테 질문하겠습니다. 지금 한국 상황 이야기 잘 들으셨죠. 근데 레드와 스완은 지금 저 글로벌하게 어 소싱 어 프로젝트 소싱하고 있기 때문에 국제적인 상황 좀 한번 설명을 부탁드 지금 현재 부동산 상황 이런 Yes, I'm happy to. Uh, the market in the United States is very similar to the market you're seeing here. Um, you know, this rapid rise in interest rates has caused for um, properties to decrease in value only because when you have an interest rate at X of 5%, your cap rate is probably going to be you know, a little bit higher than interest rate, at least 100 basis points. So let's say the cap rate is 6%. Well, many people who bought properties in the past three years were buying properties sub 5% uh, cap rates because interest rates were very low. Some people bought properties that I've seen properties in Austin, Texas for two and a half cap rate. But now these same properties are, um, are facing higher interest rates with bringing the cap rate much higher. So we're seeing cap rates in the average of 7.5% for multifamily, all the way as high as 9.5% for uh, office type product. So you, when you see that, uh, coupled with banks being more conservative, because they now have so much uh, value in these assets that they have no more reserve. The reason why banks finance with 75% or 65% loan to value or loan to cost is so they can have a you know, 30% or 40% reserve on, over that asset. So if the asset has any problems, they can always take back the asset and liquidate it pretty quickly for a lower value. But now the bank, uh, because of today's interest rates, they're at 100% of the value of the asset. And the owner has very little or no equity left in the asset. So the bank is now struggling to get rid of these properties to reduce its, its, its exposure to real estate. So you're going to start seeing a lot of real estate being dumped uh, by the banks because uh, they're at a point where uh, if they don't uh, unload, they wind up going out of business because Let's say, for example, that uh, five properties in the bank's portfolio, they're now at 100% um, loan to value. And these properties are office properties, and the vacancy rate is below 70%. That means the property is not making any money, and the bank is actually now picking up the loss of those properties for maintenance. Uh, so this is why they would want to get rid of the property so they don't have to be paying out money on a, a loss of property that uh, is not performing very well. 네, 네, 지금 어, 국제적인 상황과 한국 상황 그렇게 뭐 상황은 다르지 않다고 보십니다. 어, 우리 저기 레드스완 시티어한테 한번 여쭤볼게요. 그러면 이런 어, 부동산 전반적인 수익률이 좋지 않은 상황에서 어, 에, 어, 만약에 토큰 증권으로 이 부동산을 토큰 증권화 했을 때 어, 장점이 있을 거 단점이 있을 수 있을 것 같아요. 장점과 단점. 어, 이게 어, 그런 부분 한번 의견이 있으신지 한번 Sure. Um, so yeah, I think one of the big, there's several benefits. Um, one of the benefits uh, is that we have just access to a much larger, larger source of capital. Um, so you can have, first of all, you can have people from all around the world that can now invest in these assets. And secondly, uh, it's not only limited to high net worth people or large institutions, you can have retail investors also invest in these assets. So as, uh, as Ed was saying, you have 
the, the equity piece and you have the debt piece, and they're both having issues, for example, in the US, also in Korea, and now you have an alternate source of capital. You have another way to get capital into these assets. These are still good assets, nothing changed, they're high quality assets, but they need to have a financial restructuring to go forward. And through, token, uh, through tokenization, we're opening up access to billions of dollars of new capital that was not able to participate in these type of assets before. Uh, so I think that's a big cha game changer. It's an advantage for the owners of the assets, it's an advantage for the banks, and it's also an advantage for all these new investors that are able to get into good assets that they couldn't have access to before. Um, in terms of the risks, I mean, I think if we do it correctly, and for example, in Red Swan, right from the beginning, we decided to go with SEC and FINRA compliance and do things the correct way. I don't think there are major risks because somebody on the panel yesterday said, we already have securities laws and we are selling securities. We don't really need a different law. We are selling securities and we have laws since 1933 in the United States managing sale of securities. So I think it's really just communication, getting people to understand that you are simply buying real estate. It's just a different way of buying it, but it's still real estate. It's the oldest, one of the oldest assets in the world, and it's very well understood. I want to say something on that. <clears throat> you know, we all know that you, buyers make money on real estate when you buy. So buying right is the best way to have success in real estate. And I think, like he said, with the power of crowdfunding, all the capital that private investors now can come in at lower quantities can have access to buying these real estates at a much lower price point. The big institutions have a lot of capital, but they're waiting for the actual lowest value to kind of take the properties away because they have that ability to do that. But you know, the audience here has the ability now to buy into real estate at a much lower value and with less risk because you're not putting up five or $10 million to buy the real estate, you put in you know, 10 or $20,000, you have much lower risk on that real estate and you're buying at a much lower value. So to me, you want to buy now when the price is down so you can ride the real estate back up uh, without having the liability of having debt on the property. 금리가 올라가면 어, 물론 이제 금리가 올라가면서 자금 음, 어떤 프로, 프로젝트를 진행하는 사람 입장에서는 어, 프로젝트가 많은 폴, 리포트 되면서 좋은 물건이 많이 나올 수는 있겠죠. 그런데 또 제가 질문 드린 건 투자 개인 투자자 입장에서는 이자가 높아지니까 은행 쪽으로 더 많이 몰리고 이쪽 투자로 더 줄어들 가능성도 있지 않냐 그런 질문이거든요. 어 저희가 어, 제가 좀 답변을 드려도 될까요? 어, 부동산 이제 두, 가, 이제 두 가지의 이제 어, 캐시, 어, 캐시가 발생을 하죠. 첫 번째는 임대 수익을 통해서 발생하는 배당이라고 하는 캐시 플로우가 발생을 하고요. 그리고 한국 시장이 가장 파워풀할 것 같은데 어, 캐피탈 개인이라고 하는 또 어, 수익이 좀 발생을 하죠. 어, 아까 이제 에드가 얘기했던 것 중에서 어, 약간 이런 게좀 있는 것 같아요. 한국 시장은 어, 캐시 플로우 와 임대료를 통해서 배당을 받는다는 게 굉장히 좀 어려운 시장이기는 하죠. 뭐저 한국에도 뭐한 20개 정도의 리츠나 부동산 펀드가 상장돼 있기는 하지만 어 그거는 지금 얘기했던 STO의 개념과는 약간 좀 다른 구도이거든요. 저희가 지금 논의하고 있는 STO는 어 부동산의 하나의 프로퍼티를 갖고 자금 조달을 해서 그거를 증권화 시켜서 상장시키는. 구도인 거고요. 그게 이제 뭐 여러분들 다들 알고 계셨던 알고 있는 뭐 한국 시장에서는 뭐 K 사도 있고 S 사도 있고 한데 아직까지 여러 가지 뭐 저희 이제 금융위에서 여러 가지 뭐 가이드도 만들어 주시고 해서 규제가 좀 만들어질 것 같은데 아직까지는 굉장히 좀 마켓 좀 작은 마켓이고요. 여기에 캐피탈 개인이 발생하는 거는 실은 아마 어뭐 많이들 알고 계시지만 저희가 이제 아파트 가격 오르는 거랑 거의 비슷하다고 보시면 되거든요. 한국의 이제 주요 마켓인 뭐 강남이라든가 뭐 예를 들면 압구정동이라든가 이런 데들은 굉장히 많은 캐피탈 개인을 발생을 해요. 다만 임대 수익이 한 2% 정도밖에 안 나옵니다. 그러니까 대출을 쓸수 있는 시장이 아닌 거죠. 그래서 그 STO 관련돼서는 어 아마 아직도 많이 좀 가야 될 길이 좀 많은 것 같은데 어 대출 시장을 과연 이용을 할 것인가. 그러면 대출을 어느 정도까지 쓸 것인가에 대한 부분이 개인 투자자들의 보호를 위해서 여러 가지 좀 규제라든가 이런 것도 좀 있어야 될 거라고 생각을 하고 있습니다. Um, yeah, I'll just add one thought, which is in thinking about the retail investors globally all around the world. 
and what is the value to them. Of course, the value is they want to make an investment and they want to receive a profit and interest on the investment. But there's another important factor, which is in many, especially developing countries, where maybe the local currency inflation is very high and so on, there are many people who there's a big value just to put their money into a stable investment, say in a country like Korea or in the States. That is already a big value because today they don't have this option. Their money is in the bank. After two months, the value can go down 50%. So that is a very big value. And because of what we're doing with tokenization, we open up the opportunity for these kind of investors to come in. And so now they have that value of the stability and they have the value of the, uh, of the interest and the returns as well. So, 그 예상 수익률이 이렇게 나와 있더라고요. 그 상당히 높은 것도 있고 낮은 것도 있는데 레드 수완에서 지금 어 세계적으로 이렇게 프로젝트 소싱을 할때 어 어느 국가가 지금 많고 어느 국가가 지금 굉장히 좋은 소싱을 많이 하셨으면 좋기 프로젝트 좋기 때문에 소싱을 하지 않았을까라는 생각이 들어요. 아프리카 얘기가 많이 나오시는데 왜그왜 그, 그쪽 지역을 많이 소싱을 했으면 어떤 좋은 점이 있었기 때문에 그렇게 그쪽을 치중하셨는지 거기에 대해서 질문을 한번 드리고 싶습니다. Yes, that's true. We focus on areas where we see growth because um, investors want appreciation in their investment dollar and stable markets like United States and in Seoul, Korea, uh, you're not going to see fast growth in real estate because uh, there's no room for much development, new development. Uh, these uh, emerging markets that you're seeing in the GCC, they're now growing very fast because mm -hmm. the population is increasing. The population here is already very uh, large and you don't have capacity really for larger population. And if you did, you'd have to spend a lot more money to tear down properties and build new ones. But in these emerging markets, uh, they still have, as you saw on the video, they have land that is still close to the CBD that they can develop to, to use to house um, new personnel, new people coming to the market. And so that allows for growth, and that also allows for uh, a stronger yield. For example, we see um, a, a yield opportunity for a GCC on a, on a basic level for a stabilized asset. We're pricing these properties somewhere, and it might change because when we come to the market, we might have to make a change based on where interest rates are. But right now, we're going to price those assets around 7.5% yield um, because we know that the borrowing rate uh, is roughly around 5%, 5 and a quarter percent. But these development sites that they have uh, provide you an opportunity to generate a, close to 18 or 19%. So when you, com when you combine the stable uh, cash flow of the assets that are already stabilized, bringing in 7.5%, and then you also add to it the opportunity for those uh, developing properties that are going to be developed, stabilized, and be consistent, bringing you a higher return of 18 19%. That's a total 26% average return on investment uh, without leverage. So we see that as an enormous opportunity uh, to buy into uh, because leverage is a, a double-edged sword. Uh, it goes well when interest rates are low and you're able to have positive um, leverage, but if interest rates are high and your, your um, debt is extremely high and you're going to have lower, uh, leverage doesn't work as well. So we think right now in this market where we have rising interest rates that it's better to have lower debt so you don't have the opportunity or the possibility of being uh, underwater and having the asset uh, reclaimed and then you lose your entire investment. So we're trying to look for investments that you know, are going to preserve the investor's capital as much as possible. 그 지금 아까 그 어, 제가 질문한 중에 가장 그 어, 레드 수완에서 어, 리스팅한 프로젝트가 가장 많은 국가가 어디입니까? 어느 나라에서 소싱을 가장 많이 해서 어, 상장을 리스팅을 하셨나요? Okay. The, yes, the U.S. is where we have the largest amount of projects, and we hope that's going to continue to increase. Um, as, as tokenization catches on, because we, the biggest problem for us is that sponsors were, didn't know anything about blockchain. And when they hear tokenization, they immediately think about cryptocurrencies. So our job was to convince 
the sponsors and educate them on blockchain technology and how it can help them uh, in terms of their properties. So we're seeing more people requesting to tokenize their assets, especially in today's market where banks are being very difficult to loan, lend out money. Uh, they need new capital. And so by the best way for them to generate new capital is to tokenize the equity of existing asset, pull that out, and now they can use that capital to buy or build new properties. So uh, we're seeing more uh, activity in the United States, but we're also getting calls from uh, uh, countries uh, or, or sponsors in other countries. This week we received a call for the GCC back in January, and uh, it took up till September before we actually closed the transaction out because we wanted to analyze it to make sure that those properties were of good quality and the returns were strong, and now we closed that out, and now we're moving to tokenize those assets. But I think you're going to see uh, the same amount of activity in Africa, uh, and hopefully in the uh, Asian market, we'll also see some activity. プロジェクトが送信いでそ、リスティング、え、参加をえ、そうな走って、처음에 Uh, that's a good question. Uh, because this is a new concept and many people uh, don't know uh, the benefits of tokenization, we think that the, the uh, institutional investors are going to be the bigger buyers of the product. So if we're raising $40 million, it'd be easy for us to go to uh, the larger banks like here in, in uh, Seoul. We've gone to some of the larger uh, security broker dealers. Uh, they're interested in selling securities to their customers. So we're bringing content for them. We're bringing securities, digital securities of real estate assets, high quality real estate assets, and we're bringing it in a, in a, a fund um, format so they can easily understand it and easily sell it. So I think the institutions are going to be buying the most, but as you're seeing more institutions buying and then more family offices buying, the retail sector is going to realize that, wow, I'm missing out. And I think you're going to see the retail sector outweigh or outbuy uh, the institutional level over time because there's more retail players that can buy at a smaller amount that they can afford. So we think eventually those will be the customers that we're going to pay the most attention to. Yeah, I would add also that um, we have a multi-pronged strategy. Um, so as Ed is saying, we're definitely going after the large institutions because they set the direction but also through partnerships, like we have partnerships with Hedera and other large blockchain platforms. Um, those platforms already have hundreds of millions of users on their platform who are very familiar with digital currency already. And so it's all, all easy for them to then move into the world of buying a digital security like real estate. So we come at it from both sides. Yeah. 유난진 이사님 한국 부동산이 토크나 국제적으로 토크나 할 장점이 있다고 생각하십니까? 일단 그두 가지를 좀 먼저 좀그 같이 좀 논의를 좀 하고 싶은데 어 이제 소액 투자를 할수 있는 방법은 실은 지금도 현존하죠. 저희가 미국도 사이먼 프로퍼티, 뭐 에센 그린 리얼티, 리얼티 인컴 뭐 이런 리치들이 있고 리치를 통해서 개인 투자자들이 쉽게 어, 상장돼 있는 어, 전자증권의 주식을 투자를 할 수가 있고요. 근데 다만 이제 리치는 어, 구조 자체가 어, 회사가 어, 부동산만을 전문으로 투자하는 회사가 부동산을 다양하게 포트폴리오를 구성을 하고 있는 거고 거기서 캐시플로우를 발생을 시키는 거고 그러다 보니 어, 한 부동산이 뭔가 잘못 때는 이슈가 발생을 하더라도 다른 부동산 쪽에서 여러 가지 이제 이 밸런스가 이제 맞춰지는데 어 STO 관련해서는 실은 하나의 그 프로퍼티가 상장되는 구조이기 때문에 만일 하나 이 상장된 부동산에 이 부동산이 자체가 뭔가 이슈가 발생을 하게 되면 어 투자자 입장에서는 어떻게 리스크를 해칭을 할수 있는지 조금 어 궁금해서 그거 한번 여쭤보고 싶었었어요. 
That's, yeah, that's a good question. Well, that's a, another benefit of tokenization is that, you know, typically when you're trying to buy into real estate, even this market or U.S. market, the minimum investment is maybe 250000 500000 So it's a bigger risk to put $500,000 into one asset. But now when you tokenize, especially if you come to our platform, you can put $10,000 into 10 or 25 assets, and would that really spreads your risk. And so if you're now buying into uh, 25 assets in different parts of, the, of, your, of your city and different types, whether it be hospitality or apartments or office, you're really balancing out your risk level uh, so that if one office building goes down, multifamily may go up, and therefore your investment still has a positive return. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add that we also, uh, as I had mentioned, we are also putting together funds. So for example, we can design a fund that has a diverse mix of assets, and that makes it very easy for an institution or even individual investor to just see the fund, see the properties of the fund, and pick the fund. But if they want to customize in the next level of detail, as Ed said, they can go one by one to individual assets and spread their investment across 20 assets, 50 assets, and basically build their own portfolio. So we have both options. Oh,あかんじ、レディスワン発表案号ぼこ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、
this should cover this. I think the confusion comes because of blockchain and cryptocurrency, and that makes people nervous. But in the world of STOs, we're dealing with securities, same as stock market or same as any kind of security. I think that is the most important message to communicate back to the regulators, that hey, you already have a framework, it has been working for many years, you just have to use that same framework because we're selling securities. I mean, some of the applications of that, for example, is KYC or the accredited investor, knowing that an investor should have some idea of what they're investing in. In cryptocurrency, you just buy because your friend or your uncle said that you should buy. But in digital and real estate securities, uh, you have a broker dealer who's giving you advice to make sure that you're not spending uh, more than you can afford, number one, and you're not buying something that doesn't look uh, authentic. So I think having those things uh, in place helps the consumer to make better decisions so that a, an individual in the audience can't buy a security token and then privately sell that security token to another individual because, without a broker dealer involved. Because the, what could happen is this individual can say, I bought this at some price and is going to jack up the price and sell it to this person here. And this person now is taken, is taken advantage of because they don't see the underlying financial statements and know that the price they're charging is ridiculous. So I think that's the reason why they have these controls in order and the broker dealers involved to make sure that uh, one individual can't take advantage of another. Good. Uh, 저도 궁금했던 부분인데 저기 만약에 한국에 A라는 이제 이 빌딩이 있어요. 이걸 이제 STO 하려고 했을 때 그러면 이 어, 상장은 레드 소환에 시키는 거잖아요, 이사님, 그죠? 네, 지금. 네. 어, 그거를 그러면 이게 이 건물이 만약 이 건물 여, 여, 이런 걸 이걸 이제 에스티오 하겠다. 그래서 내가 레드 소환에 상장을 하겠다면 이게 어딘가 신탁이 돼야 되잖아요. 그럼 신탁이 되고 그게 증권화 돼가지고 어, 토큰으로 리스팅이 돼야 되는데 그렇다면 그게 한국에 지금 에스티오가 지금 진행하는 법에 적용을 받을 건지 아니면 미국 법에 받을 건지 그게 좀 궁금하더라고요. 그게 좀 그런 이슈가 좀 있을 것 같아요. 뭐 예를 들면 어 한국의 SEC의 증권거래법과 한국의 뭐 증권거래법 그리고 뭐 한국에는 또 자본 뭐 시장법이라는 것들이 있는데 그게 나라마다 다 상이할 거고 그리고 이제 말씀하셨던 것 같이 지금 어 한국에서 조각 투자를 하고 있는 샌드박스 그 규제 통과한 뭐 S사나 K사나 이 구도를 보게 되면 어 전부 이제 신탁 구조를 활용하고 있거든요. 신탁의 수익권을 어 시크리트 토큰에서 어 그들이 갖고 있는 그 회사가 갖고 있는 거래소에 상장을 시키고 그게 이제 유통이 되는 이제 구도이거든요. 어 그러고 보게 되면 실은 어 한국에 있는 부동산이 어뭐 여러 가지 이제 규제나 제도들이 다 마련이 된다라는 가정하에서 어 미국 시장에 미국의 뭐 레드 소환이 됐 레드 소환이라는 이제 회사에 이제 상장이 되려고 하면 어 기본적으로 한국의 신탁 에 대한 수익권이 수익권이 어, 미국에서 갖고 있는 신탁법과 이게 어, 이, 이 어우러질 수 있는지 그리고 그 규제 충돌이 발생하지 않는지에 대한 좀 어, 스터디 좀 필요할 것 같고요. 예, 그런 것들이 좀 여러 가지로 어, 필요할 것 같다는 생각은 좀 하고는 있습니다. 네. 레드 소환에서 그 경험이 있어서 아마 좀 가능할 수도 있고 다른 해외 사례가 있을 것 같아요. 예, yeah, for example, in the GCC right now, um, it's a totally different market, and uh, the the government is going through uh, the same process of trying to come up with regulations on how to issue digital securities and also how to handle digital assets in general. Um, and so, the nice thing is that uh, they don't have a problem with um, a foreign entity. Um, Red, tokenizing an asset in that marketplace under the guidelines of the government of the United States because at least that construct is safe. That construct uh, is put in place to look after the consumer. Um, their concern is, is not for us um, selling to people in, um, in GCC from the United States, uh, our home base in the United States. They're more concerned about 
people in the GCC setting up and selling to people within the GCC who don't have a license, right? But if we have a license from the United States, then anyone from the GCC can go to our platform and register and buy an asset either with you know, fiat dollars or with a stable coin, and that's totally legal with uh, that, that, uh, that, uh, that marketplace. However, if Red Swan were to come and open an office in the GCC, uh, in Dubai or in Qatar or any one of these countries, and we were now selling to people in that country, we would have to get licensure under the regulatory framework for that particular country. And right now, that is not determined what that's going to be. So for us, the easiest thing to do is to make sure, maintain our platform from the United States and allow investors from around the world to, to buy in from our platform to be able to provide capital for the sponsor of this in the GCC. In this case, we're raising almost three, uh, $2.8 billion in capital. And so, but the key here is we hired professionals from the GC, Cushman Wakefield and KPMG, uh, to do the analysis of all the properties to make sure that we know the value of the properties, to make sure we have market surveys to, of where those properties sit, so that we understand the, you know, the, how those assets fit in the market and what the forecast looks like for those markets, so that we can now you know, or articulate that to our customers. So we want to make sure that all the documentation we're providing our customers is relevant for before they make an investment uh, in that marketplace. Yeah, I think one, one thing to add is that even in the U.S., um, right now, Red Swan uh, only sells to what we call accredited investors within the U.S. market under what's called Reg D. Uh, accredited investors, there's a criteria. You have to have a net worth of $1 million and above and so on. So that's where we started. And I think um, the SEC, the regulators in the U.S., they are more comfortable with us selling to accredited investors because they feel like, these are people who know what they're doing in terms of investment. It's not somebody who is going to just lose their whole life savings on one investment. So I don't know exactly the details in Korea, but maybe if you have this similar thing in Korea, it might be easier to start with just accredited investors um, first, and then later on they can expand it to the full retail investors, because that way maybe the regulators would be more comfortable with this. Because again, we're dealing with securities, so people today, they buy stocks, they invest in startup companies, they already have a track record how to manage investment in securities. This is just another type of security. Uh, 주식 시장 그리고 상장돼 있는 뭐 부동산 시장 이런 것도 굉장히 건전하게 지금 작동이 되고 있는 게 어, 한국도 아까 어, 에드가 얘기했던 것 같이 뭐 KYC라고 하는 어, 것도 준수를 해야 되고요 그리고 아까 어, 미국에는 RIA라고 표현하는데 한국에도 그런 라이센스가 있는 보유한 회사들 그 보유한 어, 어, 라이센스가 있는 어, 자격증이 있는 인력 들만이 이, 어, 이 업을 할 수가 있어요. 그래서 STO 시장도 어, 부동산이 한국 부동산이 STO와 되려면 이, 아까 이제 제가 말씀드렸던 여러 가지 규제와 법적인 장, 안전 장치가 좀 필요하다라고 얘기를 하는 것들이 이런 것들이 어, 실은 STO 보게 되면 S는 시큐리티이잖아요. 그러니까 투자자 보호를 위해서 어떻게 얘를 전자등권 혹은 토큰화 시킬 것인가에 대한 부분이 실은 저는 주요. 포인트라고 좀 생각을 하고 어, 그렇게 생각하고 있습니다. We we realize this is a, a an issue, and when we come to this market, just like yesterday, we went to visit with a large security broker dealer company because we rather sell through a broker dealer who knows the market, who knows the uh, investors in this market, so that we don't have to sell to somebody who doesn't understand what they're buying. So we rather uh, come into the country and work with larger or even smaller broker dealer firms who now will take our assets and sell it to their clients and we pay them a fee for doing so. And they can also make a fee uh, by selling that transaction. But at least it protects uh, the consumer in that market because if they just came to our website and they decided to buy something, we can go through a case YC to make sure that they're not a criminal, but we don't know what their financial 
you know, status is. They may be spending more money than they have or spending some their family money. So we rather go through issuing shares of our assets in the United States or anywhere in the world to a broker dealer here who understands what we're giving them and then can sell those shares to uh, the audience in, in Korea. Sure. 브로커 딜러를 통해서 개인한테도 판매를 많이 한다는 그런 말씀 같아요. 그러면 그 브로커 딜러가 <웃음> 저, 중, 주로 증권사를 말씀하시는 건가요? 증권회사를 말씀하시나요? 브로커 딜러? Yeah, security companies. Yes, exactly. The ones that are licensed um, by your governing body. Just like in the United States, we have the SEC. Those licensed under the SEC are licensed to be able to sell securities to invest individuals. We want to work with those uh, people here in this market because it, it takes the, the weight off of our shoulders from selling something to someone who who's not, shouldn't be buying uh, a security. Uh, so that's a cleaner way of doing business, and we're doing that in Africa. Uh, we'd like to do that here, and if we go into the GCC, we'll be doing it that way as well, rather than just letting any individual come to our site and buy shares. So that's B to B, business to business, B to B to C, B to B to C. Yeah. 네, 저기 어뭐 궁금하신 거 있으면 이렇게 관중도 좀 같이 이야기하는 게 나을 것 같아요. 우리끼리 하면 너 주제가 좀 단순화 될수 있으니까 뭐 네. 한국의 이제 부동산 소유자가 한국에서는 아직은 STO 관련된 부, 뭐 이런 제도나 이런 부분이 뭐 준비가 안 됐고 물론 샌드박스 통해서 일부 하고 있지만 제한적이기 때문에 예를 들어 가지고 내가 이제 커머셜 빌딩 오는데 어 나는 자본을 조달하고 싶어 근데 한국 안에서는 STO가 지금은 당장은 힘들어 그럼 예를 들어서 미국의 레드 스완을 통해서 토크나이제이션을 할수 있는 어, 그 방법이 있는 건지 이건 인베스터 관점이 아니라 그 어떻게 보면 프로퍼터 오너 관점에서 토크나이제이션을 할수 있는 그 수단을 해외 쪽에서 이제 실행을 할수 있는지가 궁금한 거거든요. 아까 그런 질문을 하신 것 같은데 그 부분에 대한 답변이 약간 인베스터 관점하고 막 섞이다 보니까 어, 명확하게 이제 제가 이해가 안 돼서 다시 한번 질문을 드립니다. 이럴 경우에 만약에 한국의 어떤 레귤레이션적인 부분이 영향을 미칠 건지 아니면 단순히 레드수안에서 한국 프로퍼티에 대한 뭐 어, 오너십을 뭐 획득을 해서 자체적으로 해외 투자자인 것처럼의 그런 관점으로 토커나이제이션을 해서 글로벌한 인베스터들한테 이렇게 뭐 판매나 등등을 할수 있는 건지 그러니까 프로퍼티 오너 관점에서의 약간 궁금증입니다. Uh, I believe it is possible, and that's why we're here, is to work with sponsors, and we're looking at large developers. Um, when I was in in the United States, it was a large developer from Korea, from Seoul, that came to our office because they wanted to understand how, answer your question, how they can tokenize. The assets they're building, they're building assets and then they're selling it to other people. They wanted to tokenize those assets rather than sell it to other people. They would just tokenize uh, the asset and hold on to them for a longer period. As you know, developers build and sell quickly because they make their profit in a very short period of time. But if they can build and pull out their equity and still hold the asset, then the asset will be with them for a long period of time. So in your situation, if we would, gonna, if we we're going to tokenize your asset. We would like to see the financial statements, the ownership. We would double check with the local authorities if your entity actually owns the real estate. And if it does own the real estate, then we'll do an analysis as to the profitability of your property and tell you how much equity we think we can tokenize on your asset. We wouldn't do 100% because if we tokenize 100% of your equity, then you have no longer have interest in that property. We want to tokenize probably 70 or 80% of the equity in your asset so you still have you know, uh, an, an interest, uh, interest in the asset going further, and you would now reset what we call um, an earnout, uh, so that as you improve the value over and above the basic uh, yield that you're promising investors. So, for example, 
if you're promising the investor 7.5% uh, preferred interest every year for the money that you're taking from them, uh, that's an obligation. Before you can pay yourself one penny, you have to pay them 7.5%. If you're able to generate 10% on an annual basis, which is 2.5% more, then that 2.5% as a sponsor, you're now splitting with your investors 50-50. So even though you have less equity in the asset, you're generating a stronger return with very little equity, and you're charging asset management fees for the property as well. So it's a very good scenario for a sponsor like you to be able to tokenize, pull your equity out of the asset, and continue to manage it long term. We don't want people who want to tokenize the asset and sell the asset because the investors we're bringing on board are looking for the sponsor to stay with the asset and continue to manage it very well. So that's, that's kind of the, hopefully answer your question. Yeah, and just to add a, a bit more on sort of the, how we actually do this, typically we would set up what we call a single purpose entity, a, a new company that owns the equity in your asset. Uh, and then when we tokenize, the investors own shares in this company. So as long as in the Korean law, you have the way for international investor to own a piece of this company, then it should work the same as we do in other places. In uh, the GCC, for example, it's a little bit different because uh, they don't even, the, the owner doesn't own the, the property itself. They have a long-term lease, a 100-year lease on the property. And so they're able to develop, build something on it, but the government still owns the property uh, for that period of time, that 100-year lease. They actually have to turn the property back to the government. But during that 100 years, a lot of profit can be made. So what they're doing is they're now asking us, to move all the lease interest, the, the ground lease interest of the asset into one uh, SPV uh, that's sitting in Dubai. And now the, all the cash flows from those properties come to the one SPV and we now tokenize the stock of the SPV. So the shareholders are now getting a piece of that cash flow. So that's how that works. So there are different ways to structure it. And that's part of our job is to understand what the needs are of the sponsor and come up with a solution that will make sense for the sponsor and, and meet, your, meet your needs. Okay, thank you for your explanation. You're welcome. So, 네, 또, 예, 마이크를 좀 하셔야 다른, 이렇게, 이게 통역이 안 되거든요. 마이크 예, 좀 들고 해주시면. Uh, you just mentioned about uh, setting up an SPC in Korea for a property that's based in Korea. Now, if that's the case, um, uh, Red Swan is an American based company, the asset is based in Korea. What about the taxation issue? Because the SPC is under Korean regulation rules. So I don't know how it would be double taxed. It's possible. It's, it's possible you could be double taxed because Red Swan takes no ownership interest in the projects we tokenize. So if the SPV is set up, we're, you're setting it up with your lawyers. We're, we're helping you with that setup, but we don't have any ownership interest in the SPV. So with, to answer your question, if now that SPV is making a profit, uh, it, has to may, it might have to pay tax on that profit unless it's in some kind of a special zone where you don't have tax. But if it's a, you know, like even in, in uh, Dubai, there's a 10% tax that uh, they have to pay on profits that are made with the SPV. And so the property pays that 10% tax, and then what's left over is sent out to investors. So um, also, who's been buying, uh, who's been your um, investors? Uh, buying at uh, uh, Red Swan to date? So we have uh, about 10,000 uh, private investors. Uh, I would say 40% of them are international investors mm -hmm. and 60% are U.S. investors. The U.S. investors are all accredited. The international investors are more like high net worth investors. Uh, we're, that's growing every day. We're picking up you know, 10 to 12 new investors a day. We do vet our investors to make sure that uh, we understand their capability and their criteria, and that they're also their, their financial condition. But that's who's buying. Uh, we're also talking to institutions like Goldman Sachs or J.P. Morgan Chase, or Coinbase has a uh, asset management investment division. Uh, Coinbase has 125 users, 120, I'm sorry, 125 million users, uh, and 50% of them are accredited investors. So that's a large base of investors that will look at the assets we are offering that can actually acquire. I think the, the whole point of uh, doing the security STO offering is to give everyone an opportunity to, to buy 
uh, security. Um, we can buy, and uh, I don't have to be a Reg D or Reg S investor, and I can buy coin, right? Yes. But that's not really permitted for the STO um, you know, market. Um, I think the whole point is to democratize the ability for uh, little Joe, John, to be able to buy uh, real estate uh, STOs. But uh, the way it's going at this point, um, it seems like um, I, I purely understand that the fact that you want to protect the, the consumers, but um, it is somewhat uh, still at a stage that it is not purely democratization. Yeah, I take yeah. that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think... Um, the, the, the regulators in, in the different countries are trying to be careful and take this step by step. So, for example, in the U.S., uh, it's limited to the Reg D, the high net worth investors, but they have what's called a 12-month lockup period. So they buy, let's say, Red Swan token. They have to wait for 12 months to hold this before they can resell it on an ATS. But after this 12-month lockup, they can resell it to anybody. So at that point, the little guys that you said can get into the picture still have to go through KYC and so on. But just like anybody can go to NASDAQ or stock market and buy, the people will be able to buy. So I think you know it's going to take that period, but then that will be possible. Obviously, globally, it's possible straight away because Reg S does not have a limitation on accredited investors. So people, globally, anybody could buy in right from the start. Uh, and there are also some other um, regulations in the US that we are exploring. For example, you have Reg A, Reg A+. Plus which allows you to sell up to $70 million in a single asset to any investor. Um, so it's possible that in down the line we might use that as a way to allow even the non-accredited investor to go straight in at the issuance phase. But frankly, we have our hands so full with so much to do already um, that I think right now starting with the Reg D is a very straightforward and way in the U.S. to do that, and then Reg S for the rest of the world. Thank you. Yeah. 또 이제 시간 많이 안 남았으니까 예. Yeah. 안 하신 분 아까 이쪽 오른쪽에 안 하신 분. 네. 어 대부분 그 상업용 건물이나 또는 리조트 같은 경우 뱅크론이 다 있는데 어 STO 하는 데 문제가 없는지 하나 하고요. 두 번째로는 어 이런 그 수익률이 뭐 어느 정도 보여야 되는 걸로 알고 있는데 이런 어, 부동산을 STO 하는 과정에서 시간이나 기간이나 또는 일반적으로 STO에 성공하는 기간 또 비용 이런 것들이 얼마나 드는지 알고 싶습니다. 안 붙으시는가? 오케이. Okay. Um, the first question, you're right. Uh, many of the properties in the United States have debt, and so um, we have to be conscious of the debt. So we're only tokenizing the net equity in the property. We don't, or we can tokenize the debt and replace the debt with tokenized debt as well. But typically, because debt is cheaper than equity, we focus on the equity side, and we are aware of the bank debt. Uh, we also communicate with the bank. We read the bank notes to make sure that there's no preclusion of uh, bringing on multiple investors. Typically, banks, even some of the agencies in the United States, will allow you to bring on investors as long as those investors don't have more than a 20, don't have over a 20% interest in the asset. If they do, they'd be considered a, a KP, which is kind of a partner, and they want to make sure they can verify that partner before they can buy. The bank usually wants to do that. But if they're buying less than you know, 5 or 10% individually interest in the asset, the bank is okay with that. And the other requirement the bank wants to make sure of is that the, the, the principal themselves stay into the asset. So the bank wouldn't want, for example, uh, a, part, a owner to tokenize the asset, bring in three, 400 investors, and they step out of the, uh, of the uh, property because the bank provide, provide that note based on the due diligence of that sponsor. So they require that sponsor to stay in the asset, and new investors have to be below the threshold of ownership. Uh, second question was how long does it take and how much does it cost? Is that what you asked me for tokenizing? Is that yeah, what the, no, yeah. so um, typically uh, the tokenization process for doing all the due diligence work is uh, 45 to 60 days, 
all the legal work, the preparing the PPMs, the minting of the token, the preparing it on the, on the marketplace. And then um, there's going to be a marketing period where we're blasting and telling people in our membership that this is a new opportunity, and we give them 30 to 60 days to look at the asset. And then we'll give another time period, which is closing, to let them know that we're now closing that asset, and that could take another 60 days. So start to finish, it could be eight to nine months to actually sell out uh, an asset. But, you know, I've been in real estate for 20 years. It takes eight to nine months to sell a piece of real estate anyway when you're marketing it. Uh, so it's about the same. Last question. 네, 저는 그 신영증권의 윤이사님한테 질문이 있습니다. 그 이제 증권사에 계시고 또 이제 부동산 개발 쪽도 관여돼서 하시는 걸로 아까 전에 설명을 들은 것 같아서 그 아까 전에 이제 그 브릿지론 PF까지 이제 언급을 해주셨는데 한국에서는 그런 문제점이 현재 있는 상황이고 그런 문제점들이 향후에 계속 고금리가 지속이 된다고 하면. 이게 이제 ST를 통한 어떤 해결 방안의 가능성이 있는 건지 뭐 내년에 이제 전자증권법하고 자본시장법이 개정이 된다고 하면 비군전 신탁 수익 증권으로 그런 부분을 어떤 실물 기초 자산을 갖고 어 ST를 가능한지 그런 부분에 있어서 의견을 듣고 싶습니다. 어 시큐리티 토큰은 어어 그냥 현재 유통되고 있는 증권을 아직까지는 전자증권했다라는 판단으로 지금 보여지는 현재 상태인 거죠. 지금 어, 레드스완 쪽에서도 얘기하는 지금 STO는 STO는 어, 실제로 어, STO 그 시, 실물과 실물 그 시큐리티와 예전엔 저희가 이제 문서증권이었지 않습니까? 문서증권이 지금 전자증권으로 바뀌었지 않습니까? 그 전자증권을 토큰화 시킨다라는 건데 지금 레드스완이 하고 있는 그 프로세스도 딱그 중간 단계에 있거든요. 아까 말씀드렸던 것 같이 어 현재 뭐 예를 들면 여러 가지 어 PF의 문제, 뭐 브릿지론의 문제 이런 것들이 과연 어 ST로 해결될 수 있을까? 어 그거는 현재 ST가 아닌 다른 어 예를 들면 투자로 다른 어떤 대체 투자로 얘가 해결될 수 있을까 하고 좀 동일한 질문인 것 같거든요. 네. 여기 중국에는 그거는 금리 이슈가 제일 커 보입니다. 네. 그러니까 ST ST는 그냥 저는 수단이라고 보여지고요. 예. 어, 대답이 됐습니까? 네. 그러면 뭐 시간이 거의 다 돼서 어, 이 오늘 세션 마지막 마지막 날인데. 마지막으로 우리 레드스판님 한국 우리 한국인들한테 하고 싶은 말 여기 와서 뭐 소감 단 어, 그렇게 한번 마지막 말씀 부탁드리겠습니다. I go first. Well, I, first of all, I thank you very much for allowing me to be here, Augustine. I uh, I have never been to Seoul before, and I was um, very pleased that you invited me to come. We're on our way to go to Singapore after this, so we have to leave for Singapore tomorrow. I really enjoyed the audience. I really enjoyed the atmosphere of Seoul. I think I see nothing but real estate, so it gets me excited. And I'm hoping that we can come back and help uh, to tokenize properties here in Seoul and, and hopefully um, bring investors into uh, some of the projects that are tokenized. But I hope to come back. I think it's a very exciting market. and. Um, Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so just like Ed, um, it's my first time here in uh, Korea, so I'm happy to be here and thank you for the welcome. Um, my general impression was that uh, things are still early here in terms of STOs, uh, but actually for me as uh, somebody that works in technology and innovation and startups, I'm excited when it's early. If it's, uh, if it's late, then the opportunity is already gone, so I feel like All the people here today are the ones coming in at the beginning of a very exciting time. And I hope I will see you all again as this industry goes up. The <laughs> 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 어, 투자자가 안전하게 투자할 수 있고 이 시장이 건전한 방향으로 성장될 수 있게 이런 토론이 좀 많아졌으면 좋겠습니다. 네, 이상입니다.
네, 사실 이 어, 어, 컨퍼런스라는 게 이게 어, 리미트한 어, 어, 저한 한정된 시간을 가지고 하니까 굉장히 깊은 이야기는 할 수가 없는 것 같아요. 그래서 오늘 그래도 뭐한 시간 내에 해서 많은 이야기를 들을 수 있었고 저기 데이비드 교수 같은 경우는 미국의 마이애미 로스쿨 이쪽에 디지털 에셋의 권위자거든요. 근데 사실 오늘 같은 시간이 좀 있으면 좀더 많은 깊은 이야기를 하면서 토론을 하면 우리가 지금 한국 STO가 상당히 저기 어 아직 방향성을 못 잡고 있는 상황에서 상당히 많은 도움이 됐었다는 생각인데 그래도 어제 또 열심히 강의해 주셨고 예. 우리 또 다른 기회에 또 한번 이렇게 모여서 다음에는 진지하게 한국의 STO 법률 관계자들 그리고 여러 관계자들과 같이 토론하는 시간이 있었으면 좋겠습니다. 네, 오늘 좋은 말씀 너무 감사드리고 레드 스완 우리 CEO 에드워드 and the CTO 단 신영조권 이사님 너무 감사드리고 많은 박수 한번 부탁드리겠습니다. <웃음>